it used to be the case that only a few students took online classes. But today, more and more students are enrolling in online classes. Even students who live on campus are taking online classes. But online classes can be a double-edged sword for our students. For a lot of students, they need that flexibility, especially if they're working full time or they're taking care of a family. But we do know from the data that the more students take online classes, the less likely they are to stay enrolled and to graduate. Let's look at the data. These numbers come from the University of Arkansas at Little Rock from the 2017-2018 school year. And what we see here is that students who are enrolled in completely in-person classes are retained about 60% of the time. That means that when they're enrolled in the university in the fall of 2017, they stay enrolled in the university in the fall of 2018. Now that number increases slightly when we look at students who take some of their classes online, but less than 50% of their course load. This is where we see the benefit of online classes, where we see our students benefiting from that flexibility. We see an increase in retention when they have those online classes in their course load. But remember the double-edged sword, because when students take an increasing number of their classes online, we see a precipitous decline in retention until we get to this final column where we have students who are completely online and they are retained less than 50% of the time. We're losing more than half of our completely online students from one year to the next. This is a major problem. Today, I'm gonna to talk about concrete data-driven solutions that faculty can adopt today to improve retention and to keep students in their classrooms. When we look at these numbers, the problem may seem overwhelming, but there are specific strategies that are simple that faculty can adopt right now that can improve retention and that can help them tackle this difficult problem. It's not as hard as you may think. And I'm gonna start by telling a story. And it's a story that begins with a bright-eyed and bushy-tailed version of me 10 years ago, fresh from graduating from a PhD program at the University of California in Santa Barbara, uh, and just starting my first tenure-track job. Uh, I was all excited to begin teaching and molding young minds, and I was asked to teach my first online class. And I was excited and ready for the challenge and ready to start teaching online. And then I ran into the not so friendly user interface of Blackboard. And I found that teaching online was more difficult than I thought it might be. And I found that it wasn't as exciting and engaging to teach my online students as it was to teach my face-to-face -face classes. And I found that I was pretty busy in my first job and I didn't have that much time to give to it. And before you knew it, I was wondering, shoot, when was the last time I checked in on those online discussion posts? And pretty soon I noticed something in my online classes. I noticed that my retention rates in my online classes were 15% lower than my retention rates in my in-person classes. That means that 15% more of my students in my online classes were earning Ds, Fs, or withdrawing from the class completely. And this bothered me as a professor who cares about the success of my students. And it also bothered me as a social scientist who was wondering what is going on in my classes. I'm the same professor teaching the same class, using the same lectures and the same textbooks why is there such a difference in retention? What's the difference here? Now, of course, the major difference is the fact that one class is taught in person and one class is taught online. That this difference in the delivery mode is creating this distance between myself and my students that's making it harder to keep the students in my class. So, like any good social scientist, I devised an experiment. And for five years, I divided my introduction to political science classes in half. And in half of those classes, I tried to bridge that distance. I tried to build rapport with my students. And in the other half, I kept teaching that class the same as I always did. So in the classes where I was trying to build rapport, I was trying to build relationships. I was trying to connect with my students. 
And the one way that I did that was to try to humanize the instructor. I wanted my students to see me as a real human being. And so I did that by posting a picture of myself in the Blackboard course, by um, using my own sarcastic and ridiculous voice in writing the lectures for the course, by posting a video every week so the students could see me and hear me, uh, and talking about books that I'd read recently and talking about myself so that they could see me as a real person. Another way that I tried to build relationships and connect with my students was by providing personalized feedback. So I did this through discussion boards where every time I interacted with students on the discussion boards, I called them by their first names and I responded specifically to the comments that they made so that they knew that I was paying attention to the comments that they were leaving, that I knew exactly what they were saying and that I was appreciating what they were contributing to the class. When they turned in assignments, I left feedback that was specifically tailored to their own assignment so that they knew that I was reading their assignment and was paying attention to their contributions. Another way that I built rapport with my students was by reaching out to them through email. So my students got a number of individual and personal emails throughout the semester where I would just check in with them, ask them how the class was going, tell them what their grades were on recent assignments, tell them that they had an assignment coming up that was due, tell them that they had missed an assignment that was past due, uh, and ask them how things were going. This was an opportunity just to check in with them and let them know that I knew them and I cared about their success in the class. And what I found in the end was that it made a real difference for my students. Uh, so what I found was a 13% increase in the retention rate in those courses that were taught with rapport. So what happened was that my online courses, the retention rate became statistically indistinguishable from my in-person courses. And what I also found was that there was a seven point increase in their course grades as well. This really made a difference for the success of my students in my online classes. In order to study this beyond just my own introduction to political science classes, I partnered with my colleague, Dr. Heidi Harris, to study classes in the College of Social Science and Communication. And we surveyed students in 35 different classes, uh, and we asked them about rapport in their online classes. And using their responses, we created an average rapport score for each of those 35 classes. And we took that data and we paired it with anonymous data from the Office of Institutional Research for all 910 students enrolled in those courses. And what we found was the higher the rapport score in the class, the higher the retention in the class. Now, because we had this anonymous data from OIR, we were also able to control for things like GPA, because of course students with higher GPA are more likely to stay enrolled in college. Uh, things like race, gender, how many online classes they had taken. And doing that, we were able to run some advanced statistical models. And when we control for all of those things, we can see exactly how much of an impact rapport has. And when we did that, we can predict their probability of staying enrolled. And what we found was that moving from a low rapport to a high rapport class makes a 30 percentage point difference in terms of retention. 30 percentage points. We were astonished to find that the effect was that large. Just for comparison's sake, that's approximately the same difference as moving a student from a C plus to a B plus average. So the effect of moving from a low rapport to a high rapport class is the same as moving a student an entire letter grade. That's how big of an effect it has to build relationships and have our students feel like we care about their success. Just think about what this would mean for our students, a 30 percentage point improvement in retention rates. Just think about how many more students would graduate. Just think about how many lives would be changed, how many careers would be built, how many families would be impacted. Now, a 30 percentage point gain is admittedly a big reach. That's moving from the lowest possible rapport to the highest possible rapport. But remember my intro to political science classes? I wasn't a bad teacher. I just needed to learn a few skills about how to connect with my students in my online classes. And I saw a 13 percentage point gain in retention. That is absolutely achievable. And in fact, it's easier than you might think. 
I want to share some data that we just recently collected that shows just how easy it is to build rapport with students in online classes. So we recently asked students, what makes a class the best class that you've ever taken, or alternatively, the worst class that you've ever taken? Uh, and after talking to over 2,000 students in 2018, we found that no matter if the class is online or if the class is in person, there are a few things that students really value about a class. Um, they value clear and direct communication. They want to know what's expected of them in the class. Uh, they value relevant content. They want to know that it's going to matter for their lives and for their education. Uh, and they value fair assessments. They want to be tested on what the class is actually about and what they learn in lectures. And while they like to have professors who are friendly and engaging, what they really appreciate is professors who are available. They want professors who answer their emails. <laughs> and so we decided to take these things and try to create a simulated course that involved this in an experimental setting. And so we did that in 2019, and we invited students to participate in this minimum rapport experiment. First, in the experimental course, what we called the minimum rapport course, where we tried to include these things that students wanted to see in a course. So in this course, uh, it's taught by Dr. Dave Smith, and you can see the, the nice picture of Dr. Dave Smith here. He looks like a friendly guy, and he has a nice welcome message on his screen here. And he has clear and direct communication where he welcomes the students, tells them exactly where to go to find the material that they need to, to complete the assignments for the course. Um, he tells them in the syllabus that he's available. He invites them to contact him. He talks about his office hours. Um, he really makes himself available to the students and kind of builds that relationship and builds that rapport. And we contrast that with the control condition here where it's just a simple description of the course and says, read the syllabus, complete the assignments. The content of the course was the same. The things that were different was how the professor presented themselves and how they presented themselves in the syllabus and how they presented the material. The total amount of time that students were in the course in this experiment was 19 minutes. So this is not a lot of time. And a lot of this stuff is exactly the same. There's just these few differences in the way that the professor is presenting himself. So can this make a difference in how the students feel about the course and feel about staying in the course? So we asked the students, if this was a real course that you were enrolled in, how likely would you be to stay in the course? And we were really surprised to find a 20 point difference in students saying that they would be very likely to stay in the course when they had that rapport condition. In as little as 10 minutes, being in a course where they had a professor who was welcoming and who was available to them, you see a 20 point increase in students saying they're very likely to stay enrolled in the course. When I did my original experiment in my introduction to political science classes, I thought it took a semester of deep and intensive relationship building with students to see these kinds of gains in retention. But it turns out that all it takes is a minimum level of human engagement and encouragement and letting students know that you care about their success. We can do better. Our students deserve better. The data that we've been collecting for the past 10 years shows that we can make a difference in retention. The problems that our university is facing and that universities all across the country are facing with retention are broad and they're deep and they're not going to be solved overnight. It's going to take the entire campus pulling together from financial aid to student life to solve these problems. But there are things that professors can do today in their classes to reach out to students to be a little more welcoming, to be a little more inviting in their classes, to reach out to them, and to make that human connection. These small efforts will accumulate, and they will make a difference for retention, and they'll make a difference for our students. Thank you.